So in this lesson, we want to solve linear equations. Linear equations are also considered degree one equations. And I'll set the highest degree of the exponent is one. So this is going to be considered a degree one equation. So degree one equations are described as linear equations. So when solving equations, you're looking for the value of x that makes this left side equal to the right side. So if I wanted to guess, I could try like a number. I could try maybe like two. Two is my lucky number. So what I do is put in place of x, I can put a two and I get three minus two. So that's how the left side would be a one. And on the right side, when you replace the two for x, that's going to be four times two plus eight. Four times two plus eight. Notice how it gives me 16. So notice how one does not equal 16. So two is not the solution. So that's not going to work. And I could continue to guess and check uh, until I found the answer. But remember, in algebra, the answers don't have to be whole numbers. They can be fractions, they can be decimals, and they can be negative numbers. So there's a lot of numbers out there in this world of, of real numbers. So an easy way to do this, instead of just guessing and checking, is actually use algebraic strategies. So if I have more difficult equations, what we can do is we can kind of follow these steps here. So the first step is to simplify each side of the equation by removing parentheses. We may also have to use what's called distributive property or combined like terms. So if we look at this expression, notice that you have a three and a negative x on the left side. Those are not like terms. On the right-hand side, you have a four x and an eight. Those are not like terms. So each side of the equation is simplified. So the first step, all this we really don't have to worry about. Each side is already simplified. So the next thing we want to do is, if the variable's on both sides, pick on the little guy, and we will use what we call a zero pair. So if you look at this problem here, notice how the x is on both sides. The variable is on both sides. So what I mean by the pick on the little guy is there's a negative x and there's a positive four x. So a negative number is considered littler to me. So what I want to do is use the zero pair of a negative x. And the opposite of a negative x is actually going to be a positive x. So what I want to do is I want to add an x here, but the property of quality says whatever you do one side, you have to add to their side. And since it's a like term with the 4x, I'm going to add an x to this side of the equation. So I'm going to draw a little line to add this all up, and I'm going to add down the page. So if I put that together, notice how the 3 is going to come down. The negative x and the positive x are going to zero out. This is a zero pair, if you will. The equal sign comes down. 4x plus another x is going to be 5x's all together, and then the x is going to come down. So now what I have is 3 equals this 5x plus 8. So from there, what we want to do is the next step is solve by getting x by itself. So again, I, a lot of times I like to have the variable on the left side. So I, I would write this as 5x plus 8 is equal to uh, 3. That's what's called the symmetric property. So if 3 is equal to 5x plus 8, then 5x plus 8 would also equal 3. So to get x by itself, we want to use the zero pair for the constant. So the 8 is called the constant. So I want to zero it out by using its opposite. So the opposite of an 8 is going to be a negative 8. So I'm going to put a negative 8 here as long as I put a negative 8 on their side of the equation. So now I want to kind of put that together. So notice how the, the 8 and the negative 8 are going to zero out. That leaves me my 5x. And then what we have is this 3 and lose 8. Well, 3 lose 8 would actually just be a negative 5. So I, I did the zero pair. The next thing is use division to make the coefficient equal to 1. So the coefficient of x is this 5. So what I want to do is divide by 5 to make the coefficient turn into a 1. So when I divide each side by 5, what happens then is the fives will divide out and turn into a one. Well, one X is the same thing as simply writing X. So the coefficient of one is not written. Negative five divided by five would be a negative one. So what they're saying is our solution is a negative one. So our solution set inside these little braces, we're gonna be putting a, a negative one in there as our solution. 
So if we want to actually check this, I can go to my calculator and I can substitute negative one in for X. So that's how we had three minus X. So that's going to be three minus negative one over there. And that's going to be a four. And on the right hand side, if I substitute X in a negative one in for X there, that's going to be four times negative one plus eight. So four times negative one plus eight. Notice how that does give me four as well. So notice how the equation is true. So therefore negative one is called the solution to the equation because it made, made each side of the equation the same, equal or equivalent.